Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, regulars and welcome to the uh, new subscribers. So, just been uh, working on getting everything uh, working and uh, jiving together on the machine. This is definitely lots of learning going on and um, lots of reading, but we're making progress. Uh, I got a cycle start, feed, hold, and stop buttons working now. Um, and the spindle is under PWM control. And uh, yeah, we're just slowly but surely uh, you know, checking things off the list, uh, working, working towards a uh, completed machine. So, doing some things down in here in the enclosure. Uh, let's see, the first thing, um, this is a pretty commonly used, like a Sane Smart um, TTL relay. It's a pretty easy way to interface between, you know, your five volt stuff. And uh, yeah, these are optically isolated, and uh, this won't work. Um, the five volt is coming off of a uh, have a little meanwhile five volt power supply, and uh, I guess the uh, for the optically isolated um, circuit to work, there needs to be it needs to be on its separate uh, power supply. So I've got a little uh, converter uh, there to maybe try to get that done. So. Um, that's new. Um, this is the analog converter from the MX to the uh, Hitachi VFD, and uh, that appears to be working. Um, this particular thing has like a 1.1 volt voltage drop, so instead of 10, it's like uh, 8.9. Um, so you won't get your like full, uh, you know, scaling. So um, in order to rectify that in this particular drive you're able to shift around the uh, 0 to 10 like analog uh, um, like reference number I guess you would call it so the, you'll get a full 120 Hertz or whatever your max uh, your Hertz are on your drive um, when the uh, MX3660 uh, does its 8.9 volts um, the drive will see that as 10 so uh, there still is some air on the uh, PWM you know side of things depending on what uh, speed you're running at but uh, I'm not really sure on what the expected like uh, accuracy of PWM like open loop control is over um, a, a range of RPM so, but definitely looking to add a, uh, uh, like an encoder or something for some closed loop action or just uh, figure out how to do everything from Modbus. That would probably be the easiest thing. But... So I think that is about it for in here. And here, this is showing the, uh, this is a little Intel NUC uh, Windows PC, and a couple of people have asked about this, like, where's the computer? I don't see the computer. Like, this, uh, this is the computer right here. Um, I think, actually, uh, who is it? Whoever sells the Acorn, this is what they are uh, specking for their systems is a uh, uh, Intel NUC. So, it seems... It seems pretty cool. I mean, you definitely cannot beat it for you know size factor, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been working you know with the uh, smooth stepper. So it seems like a, a win win. And also, this is that uh, uh, it's a hundred ohm, two hundred watt uh, breaking resistor. Um, had that hooked up and uh, got it pretty dialed in and uh, it's definitely working so that's exciting 
Another thing I'll mention, um, this is the USB end for the Vista CNC MPG, and it's definitely like the the downside to using USB stuff like this is um, if you're not man enough to uh, you know re-terminate these ends and uh, you feel the need to you know pass cords through cord grips. Um, you know, you can see the problem. This would never fit through the, you know, proportionately sized cord grips. So you have to uh, use a bigger one and a three quarter works, but you can imagine a three quarter cord grip on a little USB might be a little funny. So this is sort of a, so this is a three quarter cord grip. This comes out too, but so you can see that this fits in there, right? But it won't clamp. A little ABS adapter clamper. And uh, yeah, this snaps over the cord and uh, then you can push it in there. So let me put it together real quick and I'll show you. All right, so there, uh, there's the grip with the uh, little homemade adapter thing so if you feel the need to uh core grip everything in your life this uh, could very well be the means to do that here is the other end of the mpg um, this unit's from vista as i said earlier it's super nice um yeah the quality uh, it just feels nice it's got like the right weight um, i know some of the uh, cheaper ebay uh, equivalents um, you know they need to like add some lead fishing weight or something inside of them so they're a little heavier but um, yeah this one came with a straight cord and uh, just this weekend I switched it out for a curly curly stretchy cord and um, yeah it's definitely much cleaner than the straight stuff it's just way too long so it's pretty easy it's just like simple solder job and then it runs along the bottom there this white stuff is uh, commonly found in like offices and desks for like cable runs self-adhesive hardware store grade And this is the mount, little uh, prototype. Come on, light. Um, yeah, PET G, 3M, double sided tape. It's pretty snazzy. I'm hoping to, or I'm planning on, once the machine's done, to uh, maybe make a little video on drawing that up, or it's already drawn, but you know, tool pathing and. Uh, Seeing if we can rip one of those out of a big block ABS. Also, I got the um, X and uh, Y home switches uh, set up and working, and also checked all the clearances and soft limits and made sure everything was uh, jiving and you know everything was clearing what it needed to clear. This gutter on the front, um, made it out of one piece, used the sheet metal brake to bend it and um, put ends on it. But uh, those are held on, that gutter across the front is held on in the uh, T-slot uh, that goes across the front of the table, if you're familiar with that. And uh, it's slotted so you can just loosen the, you know, four nuts and, or T-nuts and bolts that hold it on and that whole gutter just slides off um, this way. So, yeah, we're getting there. I think I mentioned that I also uh, was able to figure out the Lua script signal stuff to be able to do this uh, in mock and make them work. And that was my first mock for Lua scripting success. This 
So this is looking at the monitor. We'll start the spindle. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying when the uh, uh, the buttons finally work. I'll reposition the camera and um, I'll show you uh, the braking resistor working. All right, um, so this will be it started at 3000. Let's crank it up. So that's 5400 and uh, watch I'm going to hit the stop and uh, you'll see the, the braking resistor is working nice. This is 5500. So this will be an M3S5000, this will be 5000 and now we'll go over to, uh, we'll do an M4. So this will be 5,000 and then go the other way. So yeah, that's the spindle, the resistor, the $13 braking resistor is uh, working like it's supposed to. <laughs> um, yeah, trying the, the onboard uh, injection braking, like the non-resistor on the WJ200. Um, if you even think about um, trying to stop it that fast, especially at you know, 55 or 6,000 RPM, it just instantly trips. So. Uh, I'd say it's definitely something to you know look into if your drive is uh, capable of utilizing one because um, you know 20 bucks for super duper fast starting or stopping sorry that's like I mean Walmart can't even touch that that's a deal so that is the spindle uh, VFD action so far. Um, I think the only sort of uh, unknown left about it is this. Um, sometimes when you're started, when it starts, it does a, a funny frequency noise. It's like a, uh, I mean, been through everything. Like, so I don't know if someone has an idea or, um, but it might not even be a problem. You know, um, it's just it's just different. So let's see if you can hear it. It, it only happens when you start it. And it, and it seems to be maybe intermittent, maybe not. I don't, uh, just listen. And you can see it on the, the hertz, the starting hertz when the drive gets, uh, you know, starts coming up to speed. Um, you'll see like a little like five hertz blip and uh, that's, you can see it on this middle, you can hear it. It's a, like a, a, just when it starts, it sort of does a little squeak and eat and then catches and takes off. 
Let's see if we can catch it. Right there, it did it. Didn't do it the first time. Right there. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. We'll move on. So that's sort of the progress uh, on the machine. A little slow, uh, but we are, you know, just taking it one step at a time. A couple uh, things that are still gonna happen. I'm gonna do a, uh, using the AL1 and AL2 alarm contacts on the VFD for a, uh, an interrupt so you cannot, um, uh, so you can't uh, engage the power draw bar when the spindle's running and uh, also uh, an alarm for the VAD like if it trips or faults and as well as a uh, the fault setup for the uh, stepper drivers uh, and then have a you know a list of a list of sort of you know things to uh, wrap up with couple USB extensions and yeah all right ladies and gentlemen probably just gentlemen but, uh, yeah I think I'm gonna wrap up this little snippet and uh, get her out so yeah thanks for uh, watching and as always, suggestions, comments, criticisms, critiques. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll catch you next time. And um, thanks for all the new subscribers, dude. Super awesome. And um, hopefully we'll be uh, busting some chips here real soon. Until uh, next time, uh, take care.